Hello friends, in this video I want to show you where we can have water leaks in a toilet. But not the water leak that is caused by the flapper or by the valve, water that goes down into the bowl and will make our bills more expensive. No, I'm talking of another kind of leak. The leak that will end up wetting all the floor of our bath. These kinds of leaks are due to failures in the seals, the different seals in our toilet. And these seals can vary depending on the kind of toilet we're talking about. Let's go see what kind we have. These are the main kinds of toilets we currently can find in our bathrooms. The high level and low level toilets where the tank hangs on the wall and flushes water to the bowl through a pipe. Then we have the two-piece or coupled toilet where the tank is bolted onto the top of the bowl and the first valve goes directly into the bowl. And finally, the one-piece toilet where the tank and bowl are cast as one porcelain structure. Let's examine the oldest kind of toilet still found in a few bathrooms. Although there are modern versions. These are the high-level and low-level toilets. The tank hangs on the wall and the water is flushed down a pipe into the back or top of the bowl. This toilet itself has seven connections holding seals. Two at the fill valve, a third on the flush valve, a fourth in the top nut of the pipe, a fifth in the bottom nut of the pipe, a sixth on the spud assembly and a seventh between the bowl and the floor. The supply valve also has seals that can leak. The two-piece or coupled toilet is the most commonplace. This toilet has a tank fixed to the bowl and has seven connections holding seals. Two at the fill valve, a third on the flush valve, a fourth between the tank and the bowl, two around the bolts that fix the tank to the bowl, and a seventh between the bowl and the floor. The supply valve also has seals that can leak. The one-piece toilet has no separation between tank and bowl, so it has no seals here. It only has two seals at the fill valve and a seal between the bowl and the floor. In this case, the supply valve also has seals that can leak. Now, let's see the details of each of these seals. All rubber seals get old and the nuts that hold them can untighten. These are the main causes of a leak. Other causes can be when the seal is tightened in excess and gets deformed, or when the porcelain cracks due to tightening bolts in excess, especially between the tank and bowl. The supply valve has seals that can fail and cause a leak. The connection between the supply valve and fill valve, be it a flexible or a copper pipe, also must have flat or cone-shaped rubber seals in its nuts. So they are a possible leak source at the supply valve end or at the fill valve end. The fill valve has a cone-shaped rubber seal where it sits in the tank and it seals by tightening a plastic nut from the outside of the tank. The flush valve also has a cone-shaped rubber seal where it sits in the tank outlet, both in the high and low level and two-piece toilets. And it also seals by tightening a plastic nut from the outside of the tank. On the other hand, in the one-piece toilets, the flush valve is screwed into the tank bottom. And the only seal there stops the water from leaking into the bowl when the valve is closed. Let's go back to the two-piece toilets. Where the flush valve enters the bowl, there is a big cone-shaped rubber seal that must stop water from splashing back. So it covers both the valve outlet and the nut. So it can seal the space between tank and bowl. It achieves this seal thanks to two brass bolts that go through appropriate holes in the tank and top of bowl. These bolts have cone-shaped rubber seals in the inside of the tank. These bolts are another leak source and if tightened too fiercely can crack the tank. Some high and low level toilets can have these bolts depending on how the tank is secured. These toilets, considering they are connected to the bowl by a pipe and a nut at each end, they need seals in each nut. 
Where the pipe is screwed onto the flush valve, usually made of PVC, the nut should have a soft cone shaped rubber seal or o-ring, allowing us to seal without too much tightening. However, as it's not easy to find rubber seals of that size, 2 inches, usually we seal that end with hemp. Hemp that we must twist into a string using a plumber's grease. We must be very careful to only put the minimum amount of hemp we need because it's very easy to crack PVC if we use too much force. The end of the pipe that is attached to the bowl can be sealed using hemp without any risk because both the nut and spud are made of brass. But before we tighten this nut, we must put the spud assembly, including a rubber flange, inside the spud inlet at the rear or top of the bowl. In some modern toilets, this brass spud has been replaced by a plastic or rubber flush pipe cone, which is inserted either inside or around the outside of the spud inlet. However, even if the pipe cone is new, it is advisable to cover the rubber surface with silicone to get the best results, as this connection is a very common leak point. Finally, the last seal that can have a leak is the seal between the bowl and the floor. This is the leak that, instead of filling our bathroom with water, it returns our feces and urine with its lovely smell. Currently, there are two kinds of toilet floor seals the wax ring and the wax free ring. The wax free ring needs a perfectly flush or level floor or the floor must be leveled flat with a sealant like silicone. The wax ring is cheaper and effective but once squashed it can't be moved or reinstalled. When the floor is rough or bumpy it's better to use the wax ring without the metal or plastic guide because the wax adapts better to bumps and if needed you can place a second ring on top. Now I'll show you what I do to find the exact places where it is leaking. First we must turn the supply valve off. Then we dry all the floor around the toilet. We must also dry perfectly any surface that might get wet with a leak. The supply valve, the flexible or supply pipe, or the surface under the tank and the flush pipe in a low level toilet. And where the tank sits on the bowl in a two piece toilet. Previously removing the seat if it's in the way. Then we open the supply valve. With good light we examine the supply valve, connection to the fill valve and the flush pipe or where the tank sits on the boat. We keep on observing for a while. If we don't see any humidity or drops, we can easily discard the supply valve and fill valve. If we find a leak here, we must tighten the nuts or replace the seals. If there is a leak at the flush valve nut of a low level toilet, the rubber cone of the flush valve is failing. If we see a leak around the bolts, if it has any, we must replace those seals and the bolts. In a two piece toilet, any leak found between the tank and bowl can be caused either by the flush valve cone or the cone shaped seals of the bolts. So we must change all of them. If we still don't see any leaks after a good while, we flush the toilet. In a high or low level toilet, if we see a leak on the flush pipe, we must check if the leak starts around the top nut, the bottom nut or around the spud. We must replace the seal where the leak starts. In a two piece toilet, any leak where the tank joins the bowl after flushing can only come from a failing rubber seal between these sections. If the only leak we see after flushing the tank comes from under the bowl, it's the wax rig that has failed. Finally, 
a few tricks that might be of interest. If you can't find a wax ring, you must know that in the past we used to use window putty. We worked the putty into a roll about one and a half inches, then joined the ends into a donut, which we used to seal the bowls out of. If we cut the heads off two long screws or bolts, we can use these as guides for placing the bowl in the right position, screwing them into the roll plugs inserted in the floor. This is very useful because once the wax has been squashed, we can't move the bowl. If you're going to put a wax or wax-free seal that uses a plastic or metal flange to hold it in position, cover the floor under the flange with wax or silicone to avoid water and stink leaks. We must not put grease or wax where water may flow, as you can see there, because the water will wash them away. You can level it with pure cement or silicone. Well friends, that's it. I hope you liked this video and if you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, share and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.